Good day, students, and welcome to the technical mathematics class. Uh, today, you are with Mrs. Unachi Kagemnyameni, and I will be discussing one of the nicest but yet critical topics, which is financial mathematics. Uh, before we start, I would like to invite you to tune in with me, and please take those notepads, those calculators, and pens, and roll with me. Uh, during the session, if, if you've got any question, if you've got anything that you want clarity on, please make use of the comment section below. Uh, we shall be take, I shall be taking you through what were the findings over the years on this topic. Um, and you need to understand how much it weighs and how much it contributes to paper one. Let's go on. Um, this is a snip from the CAPS document and this topic weighs plus or minus 15 marks of the whole paper one out of 150. And also, according to the examination guidelines, this is what you are expected to know. You are expected to know the simple interest. You are expected to, to know the compound interest. You are also ex expected to know the compound decay and the simple decay, and also to be able to analyze timelines. Um, however, according to the chief marker's reports, it has been reported that financial mathematics is not doing so well. Hence, it was performed at around 39% in the examination of 2023, and we want to change that. Um, as you can see in this bar graph, see it's an analysis. There was inflation that was asked a question on inflation. It was it, it got 40. It was performed at 40%. It got better with the, the the start value that was asked in the question. Interpretation of graphs it got better, but when it came to the timelines, it went down and down. So we want to assist you so that you tackle it better in the examination of 2024. Um, these are the reasons why it was poorly performed. It is said that the candidates of 2023 could not identify the correct formulas because it started when they missed out the key terms. So that is why it was poorly performed. If you miss out the key terms, you end up uh, coating the incorrect formula, which leads to what we call a breakdown. Breakdown is when it is not marked at all. For an incorrect formula, you are not marked. Hence, we want to change that. Uh, please allow me to give you tips on how you can master this topic without being hindered by its language. Uh, let's go. Um, in, the, in this slide, I'm going to show you the key aspects uh, on how to tackle this topic. Firstly, I would advise you to identify the keywords leading to the formula. For instance, in a statement, you will find the term inflation. And you need to understand what each term leads to, which leads to which formula. The term inflation, or you see population, compounded, or exponential growth. It tells you that you need to use a compound interest formula. If the statement says simply interest, or you see anything with a word higher purchase or a linear growth, that tells you that you need to use a simply interest formula. If the statement has the word reducing balance, compound decay, or compound depreciation, it tells you that you need to use a compound decay formula. It differs from the compound interest formula because it has the minus. As you can see, the compound form interest formula, it has a plus, yet the compound decay formula, it has a minus. So as well as the simple interest, you get a plus, and then for the uh, a linear depreciation or a simple decay, it has got a minus. So you need to master the formula to get the max. And also, there is a question that will be asked on effective and nominal rate, which is usually around three marks, and you don't want to miss that three marks. So this is the formula. And do not worry, you don't have to memorize the formula. It is found, it is always provided at the back of your question paper in the formula sheet. All you need to do is to recognize the keywords, you go to the correct formula, and you do the substitution. Let us continue. What do you do now that you've got the statement? You will read the statement slowly with understanding, and then you collect data. That is, you write the four letters of your formulas. We've got a P for the principal amount, 
we've got an A for the accumulated amount, we've got I for the interest rate, and N for the number of years. Then you write those down. Then after you've written them down, you feed into each term, each term as you read through the statement. That will allow you to identify which uh, variable is of interest. After that, you've identified the variable of interest, you need to make it the subject of the formula before you can substitute. Because what you learners usually do, you would substitute and want to make the manipulations and somehow you round off prematurely and that leads to inaccurate answers. So you don't want to do that. You just need to, um, to make the, sub, the, 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 the variable the subject of the formula and then you substitute you feed your, answer, your, your, your calculations into the calculator and please round off only the final answer. Let's carry on. I will take you through the, these demonstration steps by taking one problem and run with it with you. Um, we have a question there that says, a cell phone bought in 2022 costed 8,000 rands. Determine the value of a similar cell phone at the end of three years if inflation rate is 13% per annum. In each state statement, you are interested not in the language, but you are interested in the, in the key term that will lead you into the correct formula. For instance, in this question, the key term is inflation rate because inflation we calculate equations that have got to do with inflation using a compound interest. Then you would go to your formula sheet, you write the correct formula for the compound interest, that is A is equals to P1 plus I uh, divided by M raised to N multiplied by M. Why am I using the M? Because that M and that M that I've written there, they signify the compounding period. How is the amount compounded? The interest compounded, is it compounded monthly? Is it compounded semi-annually? Is it compounded um, daily? Is it compounded weekly? And then it differs, the, the compounding period differs. For instance, if it is said compounded monthly, your compounding period is 12. If it's compounded quarterly, that is four, and so on and so on. So in this problem, you want to feed into the terms A, P, I, and N. Then the cell phone was bought in 2022, it costed, so initially it costed 8,000 rands. And then now the question says calculate the cell phone, the similar cell phone at the end of three years, so number of years, it's over three years. Then the inflation rate is 13% per annum, which means our I is 13%, you will all know you divide by 100 and then you get a 0 0.13. And then I'll look for any term that just says compounded. How is it compounded? Is it annually? Is it semi-annually? So we saw that it is per annum, which means it's once a year. And then you start now substituting what is the variable of interest? That is your A, your accumulated amount. And then now you just substitute. At least this time around, A is already the subject. You substitute. I won't finish this calculation. I just want to, 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 to give you just a picture. Then that is how we go about it. Then also as well, um, the graphical interpretation as well. Financial mathematics can be applied to real life situations. It is not limited to money. For instance, in this question here, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of what is going on here. In this question, we are told about the population of rhinos that are depreciating over years in a Kruger National Park. What does this figure mean here? It means initially, there were 10,621 rhinos, then eventually they decreased. There was a depreciation in their population. The first question says, how many white rhinos were there initially in 20, 2011? Then we would quote that figure there. There were 10,621. Do not say rents because this is not money. That is an application in the real life situation. Then which graph, G or F, represents a reducing balance? Then a reducing balance, we all know, I said initially, if you see a word exponential depreciation, then that would mean it's a compound decay, a reducing balance, which means exponentially. And as we see, G here signifies an exponential graph. Then you can, uh, that is how you, you, you apply financial mathematics in real life situations. Um, if we can go on as well to 
the another aspect of it would be whereby you are asked to calculate the you are asked to calculate problems that has to do with e timelines i won't be going through this question because of time however for timelines what is very important the tip i would give you when you go about it you need to look when was each transaction made and what was the interest rate at that time when that money was in the bank and also you need to know for timelines if you are saying the money is deposited we signify it by a plus if the money is withdrawn we use a negative which is a minus it's a decrease there are two ways in which you can tackle those problems if like, for instance you have got a 5000 rand that you wanted to save for a period of 5 years and then the interest rate changed twice for the first two years it was 10% maybe and then for the last two years it was 5% there are two ways in which you can tackle that question you can either do it in one statement whereby you are going to to calculate we have got one principal, principal amount the 5000 that was uh, deposited into the account and then um, you continue to, to, to you continue to calculate the different simply the different uh, interest rates in that case you are not going to say plus when you are calculating for each interest rate what you're going to do you keep on opening brackets for the first percentage in the first two years and the second bracket for the percentage of the the last three years you do not say applies however we're going to dive deep into the timelines on the next video please kindly leave your say your comments on the comment section i wish you the best in this exam and please know that it is better to suffer now to enjoy in the future than to enjoy now and suffer in the future. All the best.